But the one I want to discuss today, of course, is sleep. This profound 24-hour change in our biology. It's worth pointing out that across our entire lifespan, 36% of our entire lives will be spent asleep. And if we compare that to everything else, work, for example, is only 16%. Eating and drinking, I think surprisingly, is only 11%. Um, household work is 8%. I think that's higher than I would have expected, at least from my experiences in our household. Um, <coughs> sorry, darling. Um, <laughs> uh, but I wanted to sort of put this 36% this into, into, a, into a bigger context. I'm not sure if anybody here has yet celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary. Any, anybody here? Any hands? But when you do, it's worth bearing in mind that of those 60 years, 21 and a half will have been spent asleep. So whether you can take true credit for that 60 years as you cut the cake, perhaps really it should have uh, 35 and a half year anniversary. <coughs> But the serious point I want to make is that the 21 and a half years asleep will define very, very precisely the quality of those 38 and a half years awake with your partner. So, of course, we, many of you will be aware that sleep is not just a single state. It's divided into REM and non-REM sleep. And this is defined on the basis of lots and lots of changes in electrical activity that we can record from the surface of the skull. And so the four, first point I'd like to make is that the dynamic changes going on in the brain whilst we sleep are profound. In fact, some areas of the brain are more alert and more active uh, during sleep than they are during the wake state. So what is actually going on in the brain whilst we sleep? Well, critical biology. The first is that the development and the laying down of memories. So much of our ability to re retain and consolidate information is laid down whilst we're asleep. But it's not simply the, the retention of facts. A key thing that has emerged fairly recently is that we're also processing information. So if you want to come up with innovative solutions to complex problems, then a night of sleep has been shown in the laboratory to hugely enhance your capacity to do that. So sleep enhances our ability to come up with new ideas. What we're also discovering is that sleep is very important for emotional processing. Tired people tend to remember the negative things about their life and forget the positive things. So we have three critical processes going on which determine much of our behavior. So sleep is not only consolidating memories and promoting the development of new ideas, but it's also aiding the retention of positive versus negative experiences. This is really important. Furthermore, it's more than just brain processing. The brain is regulating the replacement of our energy reserves. Those that have been dissipated during the day are then rebuilt, realigned, whilst we're asleep. The rebuilding of metabolic pathways. Key metabolic genes are only turned on whilst we're asleep. If we consider sleep disruption, there are three basic areas. The first is short-term sleep. Now, what you see with short-term sleep, several days to, to weeks, are characteristic patterns of attentional failure and microsleeps, this catastrophic falling asleep uncontrollably. The failure to process information accurately. The brain is tired, but it's so tired it can't perceive how imp impaired it actually is. There's impulsivity and loss of empathy. You can't pick up the social signals from your family, your friends, and your colleagues. There's memory impairment. There's the reduced ability to process information. And with even relatively short amount of sleep disruption, there's impaired metabolic responses. You feel very, very hungry. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. Short-term sleep disruption can then turn into longer-term sleep disruption, the sort you see in night shift workers after 5, 10, 15, or 20 years on the night shift. And in addition to all of these problems, these brain impairment problems, you also have suppression of the immune system, high risks of inf infection and cancer, increased cardiovascular disease, risk of diabetes 2, metabolic syndrome, and increased stimulant and sedative use. 
and we'll discuss some of these in a little bit more detail later. The third category that's emerged fairly recently is sort of loosely called psychiatric. And what it means is that if you're sort of vulnerable for mood instability, anxiety and depression, or indeed severe psychiatric symptoms such as schizophrenia, then sleep disruption can nudge you further into the pathological state. And we'll finish with an example of that at the end of this presentation. So, who's vulnerable to short and long-term and psychiatric sleep disruption? Well, just about everybody. Many of you are showing short-term sleep disruption now, but the business community, which has to run on a 24-7 basis, uh, sleep disruption is endemic. Also, our healthcare workers are, are, are chronically sleep deprived. Some medications will interact with the biological clock and disrupt sleep. And of course, in dementia and Alzheimer's, sleep disruption precedes any clinical diagnosis of dementia and Alzheimer's. We see mental illness and stroke and brain trauma also associated with sleep disruption. Our teenagers are invariably chronically sleep deprived and nothing is being done to help them. And of course, in the healthy aging community, one of the key complaints of the healthy aging is why is my sleep not as good as it used to be? Okay, so what I'd hope to provide for you over the last 20 minutes is some idea of our 24-hour biology and where sleep sits within that framework. The fact that sleep is not the suspension of activity, but so much of what's going on whilst we sleep defines the quality uh, of our ability to function during the day and indeed our quality of life <coughs> uh, and our overall health. The fact that sleep disruption arises because of the complexity of these pathways and understanding the nature of sleep disruption can start to inform how we might be able to tackle this problem. We as individuals can start to prioritize sleep, and we can discuss that, but also through the development of our institute, which is a collaborative interaction, we hope to provide ways in which we can tackle sleep problems uh, across the health spectrum. And so, many thanks indeed uh, for your attention and time. Thank you.